Hey everyone, welcome to the stream. If you're new, my name's Brian, and this is where MAGA comes to talk. All right, we got a lot to cover, and I'm going to go through a few things here in the beginning that I think are important that we need to talk about. Tucker Carlson has really brought up something amazing that I've been talking about for a long, long time, and I'm glad to see somebody at his level talking about it, which is the deep state coup and some details that I think are very important for people to understand. And also, I do, when I live stream, take live calls. And if you're watching live, you can call me toll-free. The number is pinned to the top of the chat. All right, now, there has been a deep state coup going on against President Trump since he came down the escalator, right? Remember, when he came out of Trump Tower during the first campaign and said, Obama's spying on me, that was true. The media laughed at Donald Trump. Obama's not spying on him, all that nonsense. You guys remember that. And of course, Obama was. What we later found was that the spying continued against Donald Trump even after he was in the White House. And they found that there was surveillance left behind by Obama, ordered by Obama, signed off by Obama. Of course, Biden was in on it. That had surveillance devices inside the West Wing. And if you remember in President Trump's first term, there was a story, which I believe was a cover story, that they were replacing the air conditioning system in the West Wing. And President Trump moved, I think it was New Jersey, I think he moved to New Jersey while that air conditioning replacement was going on. But I think that was really a cover to rid the West Wing of the bugs that Obama brought down. Now, Peter Strzok, you guys remember Peter Strzok? <clears throat> oh, yeah. All roads lead to Peter Strzok. He, uh, the FBI agent that cleared Hillary of all that beach blit and all that stuff. And who got the FISA warrant against President Trump at Trump Tower. And... In the text messages between Peter Strzok and his girlfriend, Lisa Page, Lisa Page said to Peter Strzok in, in her text messages, none of us were ever supposed to know about this, but uh, Lisa Page texted Peter Strzok, she just got a copy of All the President's Men, which is the Woodward and Bernstein book about how they brought down Nixon, and this is our guidebook. Well, what is not really commonly known is that there was a complete deep state operation that removed the vice president and the president of the United States, Richard Nixon and Spiro Agnew, put in place a deep state Republican establishment person, and that was a deep state coup, <clears throat> excuse me, of the presidency. And Tucker Carlson did an amazing interview with Joe Rogan, which you should watch. And you know, this Joe Rogan interview of the great Tucker Carlson's getting a lot of play, but mostly what people are talking about are some comments he made about UFOs, which um, is a little strange. I did watch that, and I've read an article about it. I don't know if I'll go through that at all today on the stream. <clears throat> Tucker Carlson, uh, his belief in UFOs and what he thinks is behind UFOs, flying saucers, unidentified flying objects, etc., but what he talked about here, most importantly, was the deep state coup to bring down Richard Nixon. And you can go and watch the whole Joe Rogan interview with Tucker Carlson. It's very good after my stream, of course. Don't watch it now. Wait till I'm done. But you guys got to remember something. If you, if you go back and, you know, Richard Nixon, <clears throat> very contested race in 1960. He came back <clears throat> in 1968 and won. And the height of the Vietnam War protest era was in Richard Nixon's first term. Remember, he was elected to two terms. And Richard Nixon's first term is when the majority of the most well-known uh, Vietnam War protests took place. There were protests before and after, but the peak when they were all over the country, <clears throat> excuse me, guys, was during President Nixon's first term. And really what it was, it, it was a deep state attempt 
to turn public opinion against Richard Nixon and cost him re-election in 1972. And uh, if you uh, watch, there's a um, <clears throat> any documentary on the Vietnam War protest, most of what you will see will be protests and events that happen during uh, his first term. And it was, you know, much like they do with Trump, right? They stage protests and events <clears throat> and happenings against President Trump. They always have to turn public opinion against Trump. Well, that's what they were doing with Nixon. Well, after, <clears throat> after they had all these fake Vietnam War protests against President Nixon, the 1972 election comes around and he won 49 states. <clears throat> In fact, Richard Nixon, you see, people don't realize this now because of Watergate and the fake news that we have now was fake news back then. The fake news media have crafted the history of Richard Nixon and Watergate. But Richard Nixon won over 500 electoral votes. He won 49 of 50 states. Now, Ronald Reagan went on to win 49 states too, but he didn't get as many votes as Nixon. Nixon got a little more than 60% of the vote. Think about that. More than 60% of the vote. He was very, very popular. He was uh, he was popular when he ran and got elected the first time. <clears throat> and he was popular when he was reelected. <clears throat> and, you know, for him to be reelected after they had those coast-to-coast uh, -coast Vietnam War protests is really amazing. And it shows you that the American people were really behind uh, the war in Vietnam. They really were, or they would not have reelected Richard Nixon with that, that massive victory. So what Tucker Carlson was talking about here was uh, Bob Woodward. <clears throat> and Bob Woodward, you know, I grew up like everybody else, uh, you know, with the movie. I've read the book. The book and the movie are complete BS. When Deep Throat died, who uh, his name was Mark Felt. He was the number two guy at the FBI. Okay. And uh, he worked under Hoover. And when J. Edgar Hoover died, he wanted to be the FBI director. Remember, Hoover had been the only FBI director. He was the founding director. And when he died, he thought, Mark felt, that he would just walk right in and be the director of the FBI. And Richard Nixon appointed someone from the outside. He appointed a political appointee, somebody from his team as the FBI director. And that's when the deep state moved against him. And what uh, Tucker, Car and Tucker Carlson details all this, I've been talking about this for years, and I'm so glad that he's talking about it, and it'll reach even more people than I've talked to about it over the years, because what happened with Richard Nixon is what they've been doing to Donald Trump all these years, and they continue to do today. So <clears throat> I first picked up on, on the true history when Mark felt Deep Throat died, and Woodward and Bernstein would never reveal who their source was, Deep Throat. And they always said, when Deep Throat dies, we, we will. Well, he died, and it got a lot of publicity. And um, Bob Woodward uh, wrote and released a book about his whole experience with Deep Throat, Mark Felt. And, when I, and I read that book. I got that book the day it came out because I was always curious about that. And I read the book, and boom, Bob Woodward really let us know what was happening right then and there. And um, uh, Bob Woodward uh, was a naval intelligence officer. He was one of the Ivy Leagues. Did he go to Harvard or Yale? Does it matter? I think he was one of the Harvard guys. But he was a naval intelligence officer. And his job, and this was during, by the way, Richard Nixon's first term. Uh, Bob Woodward's job was, uh, as, as a military intelligence officer, was to take the intelligence uh, information back and forth for the Navy to the White House. And when he did that, he went through the same office that Deep Throat, Mark Felt of the FBI went through, and uh, that's how they got to know each other. And uh, Woodward tells that in his book. So what, uh, <clears throat> what happened was this, and I'll, I'll play this um, clip of Tucker Carlson when, I, when I'm done going through it. Uh, he'll he'll go over what I'm going through with not quite as much detail. But the deep state brought down Nixon. So first they got 
um, Spiro Agnew, who was the vice president, and they they um, they had a, a Justice Department investigation into Spiro Agnew that uncovered some corruption back when he was governor. And uh, that forced his resignation. And uh, so the vice president resigned. There was no vice president. Richard Nixon had to appoint someone. And uh, Gerald Ford, who um, was very well known because he was on the Warren Commission, and you know, which of course everybody was the Warren Commission from the JFK, all right. And uh, he had been in Congress for quite some time, and he was actually uh, thinking of retiring, but he was a, one of the deep state party guys, been on the Warren Commission. And Ford was pushed on Gerald Ford. They told Gerald Ford that if he didn't pick uh, Ford, that he wouldn't be able to get his own personal pick through. So he picked, he picked uh, Gerald Ford to be his vice president because they made him. You know, he had, there was scandal with uh, Spiro Agnew. He didn't want to go through all that, so he picked Ford. So after they got Ford, all of a sudden, this Watergate BS happens. And the whole the whole mythology, the liberal urban legend, or the, the false history that we're all taught in America is that Woodward and Bernstein were these um, investigative reporters that and uh, Bob Woodward was in charge of the city desk, and he covered local crime in D.C. and just happened to cover the uh, bail hearing for G. Gordon Liddy and the plumbers in Watergate. That's complete B.S. Okay, um, Bob Woodward had zero experience as a journalist. He was not a reporter. He was an intelligence officer in the Navy. Okay, and the Washington Post, which of course is an arm of the deep state as well, even still today, not as much as it was then, but it still is today. He was not a newspaper reporter. He was not an investigative reporter. He didn't write uh, entertainment stories. He had zero journalistic background and zero experience of writing of any kind. He was a deep state um, Ivy Leaguer, Bob Woodward. Okay. So the idea that this guy who has no background in journalism, no background in writing, all of a sudden just co happened to end up with the biggest story ever in history, Watergate, total BS. So the deep state, they bring down Agnew, they plug in their chosen guy, and then they use uh, their intelligence officer, Bob Woodward, with uh, the number two guy at the FBI, Deep Throat, who we later learned was Mark Felt to force Nixon out. And they did it. It was a coup. It was a deep state coup. They started with the vice president and then they went after the president. And they've been trying to replicate that with Trump all these years. But they haven't been successful because he's a squeaky clean Marine. Now let me play this clip. This is... Um, this is Tucker on Joe Rogan talking about what I just shared with you, and uh, he gives um, um, some of the things I just shared, not quite as much detail, but maybe we'll pick one or two things up. And if you look at what happened to Richard Nixon, which I, of course, did not understand at all, um, Richard Nixon was taken out by the FBI and CIA, and um, with the help of Bob, Bob Woodward, who was a Washington Post reporter who had been a naval intelligence officer working in the White House, working in the Nixon White House. And then he shows up like a year later and Dang. he's this brand new reporter. He'd never been a journalist at all. He's a naval intel officer, the famous Bob Woodward we all revere. And he's at the Washington Post and somehow he gets the biggest story in the history of the Washington Post. He's the lead guy in that story. Well, I, I worked at a newspaper. I've been in the news business my whole life. That is not how it works. You don't take a kid like his first day from a totally no. unrelated business and put him on the biggest story. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, this is amazing. And and see, one of the reasons, you know, and what we've learned is, you know, and I'll play more of this. This is fascinating because our entire history involving Nixon is false, and we're re and they're attempting the coup nonstop against President Trump. And the the reason that they'll never leave Trump alone is it's pretty simple. One, the Hoover files never disappeared. Okay, there was, there's always been talk. What happened to the Hoover files? Movies were made about it. In fact, in the 
movie with um, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio where he played J. Edgar Hoover. They showed uh, they showed the fires being burned at the end, if I remember correctly. No, they kept the files and just have been adding on them all these decades. And the one thing Trump did that the deep state will never forgive him for and will always be after him for is firing Comey. I call him J. Edgar Comey, but firing Comey. He fired Comey. That cannot be allowed. No one could ever do that again. So this constant, the, from this uh, illegal courtroom in New York with the, and, and all these lawfare cases and everything else that President Trump has gone through, including what he's going on, what's going on right now with this trial in New York, is all the deep state because he fired Comey. And they, and they got to send a few messages with that. Number one, uh, you shouldn't have done that. Number two, no one will ever do it again or they'll get the Trump treatment. And if you remember when President Trump was president-elect the first time, because he's going to be president-elect again in a few short months, uh, when he was president-elect the first time, Comey, when he was the FBI director, went to Trump Tower when everyone was going to meet President-elect Trump and threw the fake Russian dossier on the desk. And he told um, he told President-elect Trump that we can either investigate this or it can go away, meaning we can either investigate this if you're going to go rogue or you can play ball and do what we tell you to do and uh, we'll investigate this. But if you, you know, if you play ball, we won't investigate this. And he said, get out of here. So they investigated the fake Russian dossier. And that was when they tried to compromise Donald Trump. And then he went on the fire Comey and that was it. So back to uh, the great Tucker Carlson. But he was. He was that guy. And who is his main source for Watergate? Oh, the number two guy at the FBI. Oh, so you have the Naval Intelligence Officer working with the FBI official to destroy the president. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's a deep state coup. What else? Mm -hmm. How would you describe that? If that happened in Guatemala, what would you say? And exactly. yet the way it was framed and the way that I accepted for decades was, oh, this intrepid reporter fought power. No, no, no. This intrepid reporter, Bob Woodward, was a tool of power, secret power, which is the most threatening kind, to bounce the single most popular president in American history, Richard Nixon, from office before the That's end of right. his term and replace him with who? Oh, Gerald Ford, who sat on the Warren Commission. Now, how yeah, yeah, the Warren Commission, which, of course, uh, is where the Kennedy uh, cover up was uh, signed, sealed and delivered and made part of the historical record. How did Gerald Ford get to be Richard Nixon's vice president? Well, because Carl Albert, the Democrat Speaker of the House, told him you must choose him. We will only confirm him when they sent the actual elected vice president away for tax evasion. Spiro Agnew of Maryland. So you have a complete setup like an absolute Gerald Ford the only unelected president in American history, actually sat on the Warren Commission. Uh, something else that I accepted at face value until I looked at it, and I was like, that's completely insane. You didn't sure want to is. interview Jack Ruby in your investigation of the, the assassination? Okay, you're fake. Yeah, exactly. he was on the Warren Commission. And so, uh, sorry for the long story, but the point no, is, no. like, that, that happened in front of all of us, but the way it was framed cloaked the obvious reality of it. The people who broke into the Watergate office building, from which the name is taken, Watergate, I think it was six of them or seven of them. All but one was a CIA employee. That's right. That That's real. It's like, look it up on Google. Mm -hmm. So the whole thing, Richard Nixon was elected by more votes than any president in American history in that's the 1972 right. election. He was the most popular by votes, which is the only way we can really measure popularity, the most popular president in his reelection campaign. And two years later, he's gone undone by a naval intel officer, the number two guy at the FBI, and a bunch of CIA employees. You tell me what that is. Yeah, that's right. And I, I saw this early this morning when I woke up, and I felt so vindicated because I've been talking about this very same thing for years, and people have thought I was nuts. And I'm glad that Tucker Carlson talked about this. And if you notice, the press coverage of this interview is all about what he said about UFOs, not so much this because they don't want you to focus on this. So, you know, I'd like you guys, if you could uh, share this uh, feed today, my stream this uh, this day, and put it on all your social media and tell people about it, because I, I think this story is so important and so relevant. It's not just history. It's what we're living through right now with the greatest president 
of any of our lifetime, probably of the whole nation's history, and that's Donald John Trump. You know, and you you see what they're doing to him, and you see what they were successful with with Nixon, and you see it happening over and over again. It's absolutely amazing, and you know when when you learn about what they did to pre the great President Nixon, who was incredibly popular, over sixty percent of the vote, forty nine states he won, forty nine states when he was reelected at the height of the Vietnam War protest movement, he was reelected. But the liberals, you know, they they had the media then. And they've always had Hollywood. And our history books are written by liberal college professors. So what you everything we've learned our lifetime about Nixon has not been true. J you know, j just like the Kennedy assassination, just like this, and what's going on with Trump. And God knows what else they've been involved in, the deep state. And, you know, it, it seems to me that the country is really run by the FBI, it would seem to me, right? It, it, it seems that way, and, and you see what's going on. So uh, Trump's firing of Comey is what it all goes back to, and it'll continue to go back to that, and it always will. And uh, that's just a reality that we are going to have to deal with, and there's um, nothing that's going to change that because this is their country in their mind. We're just living in it, and uh, they will never leave Trump alone because of what he did to Comey. I promise you. So that's amazing, and uh, I hope when you're done watching my stream, you can go and watch that rogue, whole Rogan interview with Tucker Carlson. Uh, I think you'll enjoy it. Now, if you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe. My name is Brian. I live stream every day of the week. I take live calls when I'm live streaming. You're welcome to call me now. The toll-free call-in number is pinned to the top of the chat. Um, and if you're already sub, please like the video, okay? That helps helps grow the channel. And if you'd like to support my content, go to MyPillow.com. Use my promo code Kane at checkout. There are just amazing specials going on. You can use my promo code Kane, K-A-N-E, on all the specials at MyPillow.com, not just the ones I'm I'm talking about. But I mean, look at this deal here. The MyPillow slipper is just 25 bucks with my promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E. Uh, the ones I have, I have the... Um, the tan moccasins and the slip-ons, but just twenty-five bucks. What a what a great deal! Uh, the My Pillow Two Point which I sleep on every night. This is the My Pillow with the temperature regulating technology. Buy one get one free. Um, just incredible specials going on. The six piece My Pillow towel set fifty percent off with my promo code Kane at checkout. K A N E. Now again, you can use my promo code Kane on all the specials at MyPillow.com, not just the ones I talk about. And it's free shipping on orders of $75 or more. So uh, a lot of great deals going on there. So MyPillow.com, promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E. Now, you know, one of the um, big, big problems we've been having in this country, Neon Bright, $5 super sticker. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I've been up uh, um, since about one one thirty in the morning. <laughs> my my um, my daughter sent me a happy birthday text. She always does it. She likes to be the first person to wish me happy birthday, and she lives in L.A., so she's on California time. It was like ten o'clock at night for her, and uh, I I heard the text come in. So I, I I've been up since one a.m. and I watched this Tucker thing right away. So. And I'm glad I saw that. Um, it's just so important. But now, one of the one of the things that we've been seeing a lot since Israel was attacked by the uh, Islamic terrorist in October is really what Obama spent eight years doing. Because you know, you go back, you go back, and you look at the Obama eight years, and a lot of people think. That and I and I was one of these. It was really kind of uneventful, other than he was the first black president. In fact, Barack Obama was the first black leader of a major nation. But uh, you know, which uh, historically I guess is a big deal. But he didn't seem to do too much. Uh, he did wreck and destroy the private healthcare industry, but he didn't really seem to do too much. But what we found out was he did a lot of damage, and we're seeing it all the time. They did a massive. Uh, recruitment effort for teachers. I mean, you look at these, what's going on in the classrooms with these blue and green haired teachers with uh, these weird things going on in the classroom. But what we've seen, what he's done more than anything is how many Muslims he brought into this country and um, Muslims that are hostile to the American way of life and to Western civilization. 
And uh, every day you see a story at, at some school, sometimes it's colleges, sometimes it's high schools, of uh, the large numbers of Muslims that are just doing insane things. These are not people that have been Americanized. Um, and there's a story today. This is um, There's been a lot happening in New York. Um, and th- this is why Trump brought in that, that Muslim ban when uh, he first became president because Obama was just shipping, it seems, millions of very hostile bu- Muslims into the uh, United States. A New York University student who was suspended for taking down Israeli hostage posters on campus has sued the school claiming the university imposed excessive sanctions on her as it was allegedly pressured by pro-powerful, pro-Israel stakeholders. So she's blaming Jews. Now, I don't know what it's like in your community. I, you know, I live in in South Florida. I live not far from Mar-a-Lago. And we have a large Jewish population in Florida, okay? In in South Florida in particular. You may not, and wherever you are, and you may not have this experience. But on almost every street corner, uh, here in in South Florida, there are the Israeli hostage posters on power line poles, um, on street signs, and store windows. You see them everywhere. And this girl ripped down those posters. That is a very – first off, it's vandalism, and vandalism should not be tolerated. Number two, it's a threatening hostile act that's done in extreme anger taking down those hostage videos. I mean, those hostage posters, you know. So uh, a suspension for vandalism and and vandalism in a way that's a hostile, angry act that really would be one of those liberal hate crimes too as well because it's a direct attack on Jews. Um, She should have been suspended, no doubt about it, right? But anyway, a, a New York University student who was suspended for taking down Israeli hostage posters on campus has sued the school claiming New York University imposed excessive sanctions on her as it was allegedly pre- power, uh, pressured by powerful pro-Israeli stakeholders. She means Jews. The first year undergrad uh, in mid-October was suspended. I can't pronounce her name. I'm not even going to try. Was suspended for the rest of the academic year after being identified in a viral video of three individuals ripping down, quote, Zionist propaganda posters, unquote, of an NYU building. Now she's demanding that the suspension be reversed, claiming it contradicts the university's code of conduct and puts her scholarship at risk, according to a New York State Supreme Court lawsuit that she filed at the beginning of April. Now, let me know what you guys think. Should she have been suspended? I I think uh, vandalism should be – vandalism of any kind should result in in suspension from a a school, okay? And that certainly is vandalism. But it's certainly a a, a hostile act uh, driven by hate, possibly a hate crime. Um, shortly before she filed the suit, she claimed she secured a meeting with a dean to discuss her concerns, but was told that gaining access to NYU's administrative offices was challenging due to opposition from a stakeholder. So somebody was stopping her. So she's trying to say they're a Jew. And and even if they are, so what? The dean, who was unnamed, stated the unidentified stakeholder opposed her participation in the graduation ceremony. Yeah, I would agree with that. You know, you know, these the and, and this isn't just for these pro terrorist people like her, okay? If you commit vandalism at the school, you should not be taking part in the graduation. I'm sorry. This vandalism, zero tolerance, hate crimes, zero if she, if somebody, if a Christian kid, uh, even one who's not a religious Christian kid, tore down a transgender poster that was memorializing um, a transgender victim of some something. Uh, do you think they would have been suspended? Absolutely, they would have been suspended. And and the same people that are defending this girl would be, uh, to, to get her back in school for her hate crime and vandalism, would be arguing to keep the Christian kid suspended. Um, the university says this, in the wake of October 7th, that was when that horrific, barbaric attack on Israel happened, NYU has been quite clear with our community about our expectations for student conduct and the consequences for violating the rules. We have an obligation to maintain a campus climate where hatred and intimidation has no place and where NYU's academic mission can carry on without disruption. Uh, Since the beginning of the Israeli-Hamas war, NYU said it has reviewed more than 90 student conduct cases related to current concerns, some resulting in significant suspensions. See, you know, Obama brought in I don't know how many Muslims into this country while he was president. 
And they've apparently all of them have gotten into college. And they're turning our universities into these radical they're, they're like they're like universities in the Middle East, these radical places of anti-Americanism and anti-Semitism. And in my view, it's it's uh, it's got to be clamped down on. And you know, I, a lot of these things that we're suffering through, um, I you know, I think will fade away when Trump's back in his second term because a lot of what's happening is because the government that's you know this senile old corrupt coup Joe Biden in place, it's it's the tone that they set, you know. So a lot of these things will fade away and President Trump will stand up to these things. And when the president, when he's Trump, stands up to these things, a lot of it will go away. A lot of this stupidity. Now, th there, there's there been something new in the last couple of years that I've, I've never heard of before. And it's becoming more and more common and it's called de-banking. The first person I knew that experienced de-banking was Loomer. Laura Loomer was... Uh, had our accounts closed. Mike Lindell, who supports my program uh, and has been with me for many years on this program, uh, one of his banks forced him to close his accounts and he was debanked. I mean, this is crazy. I've never heard of such a thing. Have you? Where banks say, we don't want to do business with you? And now we find out like really what is the most common bank, uh, Bank of America, has been... Um, going after MAGA people and closing their accounts and debanking people. And most of these people that get debanked, they, are, they aren't people with platforms like Loomer or Lindell or someone like me. They don't have a place to voice it. Nobody knows about it, and it's been happening. Listen to this. This is in Newsweek, Liberal Newsweek. Bank of America is facing calls for a boycott over allegations it is closing accounts of customers based on their political views. I, this is this is a new trend in this country. You know, all these people on the left who were uh, so against uh, Joe McCarthy, who, by the way, Joe McCarthy was right, okay? Um, you know, but they talked about the blacklist. All they do is cancel and the cancel culture is blacklisting. And um, you, you got to have a bank to pay your bills, especially in this digital society. Multiple MAGA... Profiles and Republicans have criticized Bank of America in recent days over claims which have been denied by Bank of America uh -huh, that it is engaging in a practice known as debanking because of customers' religious and political beliefs. John Eastman, a former lawyer for Donald Trump, recently claimed his Bank of America and USAA accounts were closed in response to his attempts to help President Trump. Yeah, I've heard that story. A number of pro-Trump and MAGA social profiles are now calling for a boycott of Bank of America over this alleged debanking. Um, LJ Lindsay posted on Twitter, no one should be using Bank of America for their personal accounts uh, as they are not personal loan friendly and have not been for years. They they went larger. It's time to boycott, blah, blah, blah. But they are um, most definitely targeting MAGA people. And, you know, what's... One of the problems, we have a lot of problems, okay? But one of the problems that we're all having, okay? And there's been a lot of people debanked. Yeah, Alex Jones, um, Nigel Farage in the UK. There, there's there's a list of people that have been debanked. But when, when someone like Alex Jones, Nigel Farage, Loomer, or Mike Lindell, everybody talks about it, it makes the news. Most people, it doesn't make the news. So you got to really ask yourself, how often is this happening? There's been a major change in this country. And what, what they've done on the left is they have created in their mind, as part of the Trump derangement syndrome, that MAGA people are some type of domestic terrorist organization. And to them, it makes sense. And, you know, the company design, denies it. You know, it, it's possible in some of these instances that it's not a corporate um, move. It's probably not an official policy because they don't want something like that in writing. But it definitely, there's too many people that are pointing it out to tell us uh, that it's not true. I don't hear of any high-profile liberals getting their bank accounts closed. Do you? No. It's only conservatives. So when you, when you see it only with conservatives, yeah, it's true. It's got to be true. And um, Bank of America, the, if they continue on this practice, just because they don't have some official written policy doesn't mean that they're going to get away with it.
because these are some of the things when, you know, Trump's going to have a busy second term, but he'll, you know, he'll have to delegate. This is one of the things, believe me, President Trump is well aware of the debanking problem and he will put someone in charge of this and they will look into it and they will stop this. I've never heard of it. Have you heard of any high profile liberals being debanked? I have not. Now, one of the biggest um, things that Obama, uh, that the Obama-Biden uh, third term here has been doing that's causing uh, the American people to suffer is the high price of food. I mean, food and, and, and housing, too, is going through the roof. And uh, I'm very lucky. I own my house. My wife and I have lived in this house for 20 years, 20 years last month, just about I don't know, about two or three weeks ago was the 20th anniversary of living in this house. And when you live in a, a house for 20 years, that's a good thing. And, you know, and you would think your um, cost of living doesn't go up. But insurance prices have gone up through the roof. And uh, my insurance has gone up uh, the last two years. This last year, it went up a lot. Um, and, uh, here in Florida, a lot of people are really suffering through this because a lot of people come to Florida to retire and they're on fixed incomes and the homeowner's insurance is going up. The other one is food. Food prices have gone up through the roof. And, uh, it, it you know, I, I talk about this sometimes, I mean, 40% or more, depending on what you eat. And this is a, a real hardship for older people who are retired. Um, of course, uh, people that have children living with them. And um, even me, I've, my wife and I have made changes with some of the things that we eat because of the high prices. And uh, it's, it's awful. It really is awful. And uh, it's, it's done by design. They want to destroy the, the middle class, the working class. They want us all to suffer. They're trying to break us. Um, but there, the things that are going up in price, there's, um, there, there's, uh, auto insurance is going up. My auto insurance has gone way up. Just got a, a letter a couple weeks. I mean, way up. Um, and I read an article a couple days ago. It's going up. Auto insurance is going up nationwide. And it's going up because of inflation, Biden's inflation. The cost to repair cars is getting more expensive for the insurance company, so they're raising their prices. I mean, it's insane, right? And the price of the, the things that are going up the most are necessities. You've got to have food. If you've got a car, you got to have auto insurance. If you own a home, you've got to have property insurance. Even if you rent, the person you're renting from has got to have property insurance. So their insurance goes up. They got to pass it on to their tenants. You know, I mean, these are, it's, it, it's a struggle. And then I read this story with these illegals in New York, and this just, it's got to piss you off. It pisses me off. Illegals in New York City Council meeting are complaining about the free food and housing. Now, first of all, they shouldn't even be here. They're illegals. They should round them up in this meeting and ship them back to their country, all right? But they're getting everything for free. What you and I are struggling with, they're getting for free, food and shelter. They even get free cell phones and everything else. And they're complaining. The nerve, I mean, can you imagine? African illegals at a New York City council meeting have complained that the free food and housing provided to them by the taxpayer is not good enough. On Tuesday, over 1,300 illegal aliens from Africa descended on New York City Hall after being uh, falsely promised work visas and green cards. Well, I'm sorry. Immigrate here legally, like Melania Trump did. The illegals lined up outside of New York City Hall with many in Islamic garb uh, throughout. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Free food free housing, and it's not good enough. What was the food and housing like that they had back in Africa that they illegally came here from? Couldn't be anywhere near as good as what they're getting here for free. I mean, look at this. Look at that. Just boom. Look at all these people. The New York Post reported 250 illegals were allowed at the Tuesday hearing. So they let 250 illegals into the hearing and gave them a voice. During the meeting, they complained about their freebies. The food is no good at all, one of the illegals said. Um, you know, uh, I don't know what they mean by that. I mean, you know, um, my wife and I, since it's just the two of us, sometimes we'll, you know, have a nice meal. We don't cook that much. We'll go out. We'll get takeout or something. 
But a lot of times at night, you know, like uh, the other night, I just had uh, a couple of uh, of uh, frozen White Castle uh, hamburgers that I put in the microwave. Okay, that was my dinner, and I'm happy. I'm not complaining. I love White Castle, by the way. I love. In fact, I love White Castle so much. We have a White Castle in Orlando. It's over a three hour drive from my house. I've driven there. Uh, I, I when it first opened, I drove there just to have White Castle. And what I learned is the White Castle at the White Castle restaurant tastes just like the White Castle you buy at the grocery store and, and cook in your microwave, okay? <laughs> Those, I, was, I don't have to make the drive. But um, I'm not complaining because I love White Castle. I could eat White Castle pretty much every day. But that's but I, that's what I had. And they're complaining. What did you have for dinner last night? What are you having for – I haven't even had breakfast this morning. Yeah, have some coffee. You know, when you come to – when you enter a country – illegally and expect to have high quality housing and food. I think that takes a lot of guts, doesn't it? Uh, they complain the food is no good. Uh, you give us two months to stay at the shelter and then you have to go out again with your luggage and your kids and find another place. It's difficult. Well, you know, how many months do you have in your home, wherever you live, if you stop paying your bills? Like right now I'm live streaming on YouTube, right? And, um, I'm, I'm here in my home studio, and I got a lot of windows, but the, when I started the stream, this, it was completely dark outside. Sun's starting to come out, but it's still a little dark. And I've got lights. I've got uh, my computer here. I've got two computer monitors. They're plugged into the wall. I've got some lights because I need light so you guys can see me on, on YouTube. How long, if I, if, if I stop paying my electric bill, how long would the power company give me until they shut it off? By the way, it's going to be over 90 degrees in Florida today. You know, I got to pay for that. You know, we all have a limited time. If you uh, stopped paying your mortgage or your rent, how long until you'd be kicked out? They're saying they only get two months. You'd have to find another place to live, wouldn't you? Exactly. Exactly. You know, they have two months to get on their feet. That's more than we would get in their country. These are illegals from Africa. It, didn't, it doesn't say in this story, at least not so far, where they came from in Africa. If you and I picked up with our kids and went to their country in Africa, would we get free food and housing for two minutes? No. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Yeah, good Good morning. Good oh, morning hey, Richie. You, you know? Yeah, you talk about White Castle. By the way, they want to sell that's what the public I stocked up. I got oh, I love White Castle. A little slider. I love them, too. I like the, I like the onions. But I'm not crazy with cheeseburgers. I don't, I, I don't, I don't like, like the, the pickles ones. on them. I don't like the pickles, but but I I like the no, onions. No, no, and I got yeah, I got jalapeno now too. I couldn't believe I saw that. Yeah, uh, yeah. But White now, Castle's awesome. Now, I, I I can't understand. I mean, what are you complaining about? Just because you're paying for all these people that are coming in here free, and and that you got to get up on a Saturday morning and do this? I'm sure you could do other things. Yeah. I mean, what are you complaining about? What exactly. are you complaining? What is America complaining about? Yeah. What what are we are we some what these, kind of the, people the, are listen, we? This is not- these these people are retired and they're complaining that that their retirement benefits aren't good enough and they're in the country illegally. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh um, President uh, Biden who doesn't have anything between his ears anymore. I mean, he says this is who we are. That's this right. This is who we are. And yeah, this is who we are. You know, yeah. with the wisdom. Let me tell you something. I saw that him go. They got a comparison of President Trump, by the way. It's on. Somebody sent it to me where President Trump went into a restaurant, went into that restaurant in Harlem and, and started talking to everybody and, and just normal. And they showed Joe Biden actually had to be scripted to order a damn hamburger. And nobody was in they the restaurant either, like, by the way. You know, and you know, when when no, President Trump went into that dead. that Chili's and that bodega, it's are the uh, I'm sorry, not Chili's, the um, uh, Chick-fil-A and then that bodega in Harlem. It freaked him out. Yeah, I don't know if you heard the, at the end of my uh, show yesterday, I got a call from a liberal lady. She was. Oh, that was set up. That was planned. Those are fake people. They're no, so it. it no. You know, for security purposes, when President Trump stops in these places, he just walks in. If he just shows up unannounced, they don't have to do the security at the same level. It's 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 more secure. I'm sorry that people love him. This guy here, no one yeah, was even you know, interested in walking. If I if I saw Joe Biden 
in a local restaurant, fast food restaurant in my neighborhood. I'd go in and take a selfie with him, and he's so out of it, he'd probably take a picture with me in my MAGA hat. It probably wouldn't even phase him. Yeah, I was going to say that to you. I, I couldn't even have a discussion with him to tell him I think he's doing the wrong thing because he'd look at me with that blank stare. He was pathetic. I mean, I, you could really see. I said, this is really bad. He's really gone down the toilet. I, 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 don't, I don't get it. I mean, they go, have to Go back. You know, I, um, that- I played a clip of him when he was running against Trump the first time, and – he, he was, was out of it then, but now. but he he looked like he was a young man the way he talked in in uh, in 2019. Go back he's to the slow, 2019. He, N- not like now. He when he, no he had to stand in that restaurant. They showed him exactly. You, you go here, you order here. You see, and he had, he had a black uh, lady with him that when he went to pack everything, you could see his movements were like lethargic. He's like yeah. in a fog. It, mm-hmm. It's really disturbing. Scary. It's really dis. I don't know what the heck's going on here. If any people, if you vote for Joe Biden, you're not voting for Joe Biden. You're voting for some. You're voting for what Brian has up the thing. The, the, the deep state of running the country. Correct. Because this is not a, this man is not running the country. You just have to watch that clip of him in that in that yeah. food store, and 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 he's like like a zombie. I mean, Absolutely. I can't believe it. I just you know, can't the, believe it. Can, you know these really these uh, these illegals that are complaining that their food and housing in New York City isn't up to what they believe they should have. They, they, I don't understand why they just don't put them on a bus, take them to the airport, and fly them back to wherever they came here illegally from. Because, because I'd say get the uh, hell out of here. Gonna be, they're going to be voting. They're going to get Social Security numbers. You know, when I was in school, when I was, like it or not. When, when I was in uh, elementary school, in high school, if you forgot your lunch money, they gave you a peanut butter and jelly sandwich in the cafeteria. Yeah. If you didn't, you know, and that was it. You know, that's what you got. And, you know, nobody complained. You go to jail, you, you go to jail, you get a bologna sandwich every day. I think oh, that's awful. staying in five-star hotels. These people are staying in five-star hotels. The people got to realize this. Yeah. They're trashing them, by the way. Yeah. They, they got beer all over the place because they got debit cards. Or credit. They get, they're giving them cards. They're giving them a thousand dollars cash, and and you know you know those those that. those debit cards that they give the illegals, you know, um, you can buy drugs and illegal guns and everything with Anything them because you want. because the drug dealers all have the Square app on their iPhones and they just swipe the card and they ring up potato chips or something, but it's really drugs. Yeah, can you imagine? Can you imagine? I want the people out there that are on that are on uh, government help. Okay, America. You can't buy hot foods like in Publix. You can't buy hot foods. You can't buy you can't buy hot chicken. You gotta That's go. True. If you want chicken, you gotta go over where it's been cooked the day before. Well, hey Richie, I'm gonna I'm gonna, gonna I'm gonna cold. um I'm gonna move on. But thanks for the call. All right, it's good to talk to you even on Saturday. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? This is Mike from Louisiana. Oh, hey Mike. This is the nerve of these people. They want five star restaurants. You well, know, yeah. they want all this. Absolutely. Nerve. I know. You know. Can you imagine? I, I, I want to go eat in a five star restaurant. You know, right? But I, I, I might go to Chick Fil A today. But you know, that right. which they is won't. pretty good. But it's not five star, and I got to pay for it. You know, they want they want the Waldorf they want the Waldorf Historia. That's they do. That's right. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, Brian. It's Roz. How are oh, you? Oh, hey, Roz. Good morning. Good morning to you, and I wanted to say happy birthday today. Thank you. You're welcome. And I just have a couple of things. I hope you don't mind bringing up yesterday with that guy that uh, put himself. Nah, I don't on really fire. want to get into all. I don't want to get into all that stuff. I want to. I got some. I want to uh, talk about what I'm talking about now. But uh, open phones is Friday, Roz. On Fridays, you can call about anything. But on the other days, you got to kind of stick to what I'm. I'm. I'm talking about. Well, I actually caught you late. What are you talking about? I just well, watch, watch, now. and call back. Okay, I'll let you call All back. Right. Okay, <laughs> you're, if you're watching me live, um, you're, you're welcome to call in. The toll free number is pinned to the top of the chat, guys. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? My actually. My hey, good Brian. morning. Yeah, you're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Call back. Jeff from Maine. Hey Jeff, can you turn the volume down of the computer in the background if you don't mind? I I just did. I I forgot. Um, to hit that when you answered. I wasn't sure I, you were hitting me. 
Yep. I want to wish you a very happy birthday, Brian. I hope Thank you have you. a great day. Yes, me too. Me too. We're not so, we're not really um, we're not celebrating it really here at home till next week because my daughter's coming home for the cruise. Ne- a week from today we leave on our cruise. So she's coming oh, in this awesome. week for the cruise, so we're going to celebrate it when she gets here like Wednesday. Wow. That's good that she can go with you. Oh, yeah, I take her on. She's gone on all but one of them. There was one of them she was uh, not feeling well and couldn't go, but she goes on all of them, and she uh, she brings a friend, so she just doesn't have to hang out uh, with all of us. But we have a, she has a good time. She really looks forward to it. Hey, is Tucker still being paid by Fox? Because remember they, good question. what happened wasn't – I bet you he still is. That's a very good question, isn't it? I haven't really heard him yeah, address and- it. Hasn't been taught. Haven't but, heard no. him address it in a long time. But I think that actually helped Tucker get more popular because of what they did to him. Well, you know, Tucker um, was fired from Fox because of the January six coverage. They didn't realize yep. that you know they they believed their own crap, and he was exposing all of it. And they didn't realize for people that wonder what Jeff's talking about. They didn't realize that they didn't have an eye that. They, they thought because of the non-compete that people in broadcasting right. sign when they sign contracts, they keep him off the air. And apparently he had uh, – he can't go work on television or anything and start a TV show somewhere. But he has free reign online, and apparently he can do whatever he wants to do as long as he's not paid for it. And they're paying him like $20 million a year or something, something really insane. So uh, yeah. la- last time we heard from Tucker, they're still paying him. But we're not sure if that's still still continuing. He had a very good contract that allows him to do pretty much whatever he wants. And Fox didn't realize that. If they knew that, they wouldn't have fired him. They would have kept him and controlled right. him and just reduced yeah, they, his time slot. But that's typical of the liberal deep state people. They, they don't think through and react and do something. And then they find out, oh, I screwed up. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, you know, it's like karma coming back on. Exactly. And I think that I think Tucker, when that contract ride runs out, where he goes next, I, I would hope he'd go to Real America's um, news. I'd, I really love. You them. know, I, I hope he continues to do his online thing. You know, I, you know, I um, I really Can like you do to, both. Uh, you could do both. But <clears throat> I mean, the, the, the problem is if he starts doing that. He reaches more people with what he's doing. The future is this. I, You know, yep. I recognized long ago, many years ago, that, you know, my po- I, my, my wife and I, we, the Brian Craig Show podcast, which I is on all podcast platforms, and uh, I also upload it here on my YouTube channel. And we just we just surpassed this week. Our last episode was, we just did our 1700th episode this week. 1,700th episode, but we're a couple beyond that now. But I started podcasting and live streaming and things years ago because I recognized this is the future, not the old traditional media. And what and Tucker Carlson, what he has has proven to people is that's where it's at. And uh, I hope he continues to be uh, independent. My example would be my example would be Charlie Kirk. Because he does do a show and a podcast um, show, you know, and I really like Charlie Kirk. And I think that kind of brought up his numbers, didn't it? You know, yeah. And I'll tell you, you know, Charlie Kirk, though, is he's like Tucker Carlson is a is a broadcaster. I'm a broadcaster. We're, we're professional broadcasters. This is all I've done my whole life. Right. I've been doing this since I was like 19. Tucker Carlson's a broadcaster. Okay. Um. Charlie Kirk, he does a show, but he's he's an activist. There's a difference. He's an activist. There's a difference with a focus yeah. on 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 I the I never youth. thought of that. But you know, he really the, yeah. I really love what he does with the college campuses and it's oh. too bad Candace yeah. Owens had a change because she could have been huge but she shot herself in the foot. I mean, you know, I'm, Charlie Charlie Kirk I was a Kirk, big fan of hers before. It went last uh, last uh, summer, when I went to his Turning Point conference here in Florida, they, I was invited, by the way, by Charlie Kirk to go to that. Um, and I, I never, I, I like Charlie Kirk, but I didn't really think too much about it until I went there. 
And what he has done with the youth is amazing because, you know, when, and you, you're a little older than me, but when I was growing up, young people that were high school or college kids that were conservative were geeks, dorks. They were like Ben Shapiro or um, Michael J. Fox and Family Ties, right? They, got, they wore bl- uh, blue right. blazers and penny loafers and they were dorks. And when I went to Turning Point USA, it was the college kids and the high school kids and it's the cool kids, right? The the kids that are the you know go to prom and stuff, not the dorks like like Ben Shapiro. And he and and Charlie Kirk has been so successful and has made being a conservative and made being MAGA cool with young people. And and that's going to have a major impact on our society because these are these are young people that are going to find themselves as school teachers and members of Congress and everything else. And what he's doing is. It's it, it, what he's doing is like Pat Robertson used to do with the Christian Coalition, but even bigger. Yeah, it's that's amazing. a great comparison because I think that what Charlie Kirk and what Candace Owens back in the day when she was conservative, conservative, and watching what she said and didn't, I don't know what happened to her. I really don't. But what they've done for the college campuses has bled into the high schools. And it has grown exponentially, and I oh, believe yeah. that's a great, great um, impact for conservatism in education mm-hmm. in America. And I have um, thanked them many times on their site for what they've done, and like with your show, because we don't get regular news on that's most right. TV. You know, Real America's Voice is excellent. I really do like them. That's my go-to for oh, yeah, they're when very I'm good. watching TV. They're, ver- they're very good. Real, I love I love Real yes, America's Voice. Are. Yeah, I've got the app on my Newsmax, TV. I think Newsmax has gone down a little because they, they used to always carry um, Trump rallies, and now they barely, rarely do. You know, on, on Newsmax, um, I you know, I listen, Rob Schmidt— and um, Greg Kelly are two of the best I've ever seen on television. Yeah. I, I, but but the, the rest of the day, uh, you know, Newsmax is very pro-Ukraine war, and I, I don't like that. Yep. And, the, you know, and I, 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 think, I think they've turned, they've turned me off a little bit. I don't watch it that much anymore. But there's one show I'll always watch, and that's the Brian Craig podcast. And that's it's a great right. Show. Thank you, Jeff. And you got the best... Um, fans and you know i'm shout out I to do. everybody god bless you guys yeah i do and i and i appreciate all you guys you know as some of you have been with me since i was a kid <laughs> literally you know so and i and i appreciate all of you. you i've been listening in since like 2018 brian when you were on uh was it freedom eagle e- liberty eagle the liberty eagle which got shut down That's on Facebook. when i first started listening to you you know when we were you know the liberty eagle facebook group which got shut down do you know, yeah. there was there was a day, the, uh, d- d- the week of the presidential, I had more than a million viewers regularly a day, live. And on the week of the presidential election, there was a day I had over 6 million people watching me live. Wow. On, on Liberty Eagle. Can you believe it? And then all of a sudden it got shut down. And a lot of people, there's a there's quite a few people still here from back then. Oh, yeah. And, um Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. They've been absolutely. with you a long time, Brian. Absolutely. Well, and, um, I, pre- I appreciate you, it, Jeff. I hope you have a, have a wonderful day and weekend. All right, take care. Thanks for the call. Ooh. Yeah, if, you, if you're watching me live, you are very welcome to call me. The number is pinned to the top of the chat. It's a toll-free call. I, I wasn't going to get into this, but since Jeff mentioned Candace Owens, um, Candace Owens is starting to go down a path that is is very self-destructive, okay? Um, there's no doubt that she, her she was fired by Ben Shapiro's you know Daily Wire over her Israeli positions. Okay, I know that everybody denies that, but it's true. Now there's a question to that though, and you know, and a, a question is did did Candace Owens want out of her contract with the Daily Wire, and did she go down this anti-Israel position to push buttons to get released from that contract, and um. I'm, I'm sure she wanted out of the deal. I, when when Candace Owens first went to the Daily Wire, I thought it was a bad idea. I thought she was very influential. She was doing a lot of good work. And there are a bunch of never Trumpers over there in Ben Shapiro's circle. And and I said at the time when they – you can go back. I'm sure this um, 
Uh, I did a podcast episode on that, and uh, if you go back far enough, you could find it. And I'm sure Candace Owens is in the thumbnail in the title. But when she first went to um, the Daily Wire, I said, this is this is the Never Trumper movement hiring her away to control her. She, remember, she was going to have that Blexit. And, you know, that Blexit, which fell apart because of the shutdowns and lockdowns, I got an invite to go to her um, – event here in South Florida, Blexit, and my daughter, hear me talk about my daughter who's biracial, and I was taking my daughter, we were going to meet with Candace Owens at that event, and then it didn't happen because of the lockdowns and all that stuff, uh, and she was doing great, and I saw her uh, online, and I showed it on the channel here uh, at a college campus, and Candace Owens is very charismatic. Uh, if you've ever met her, uh, she's very charismatic, and she's good looking too, and she's charismatic. She's very powerful uh, back in those days. And I saw her at a college campus. I showed this video online. And uh, these kids were lining up, just following her everywhere. Very charismatic. And I went to a, um, what is that, that freedom tour where they have President Trump and Don Jr., all these conservatives speak at, uh, the freedom rallies. It's not, they're not Trump rallies. It's a Christian organization. They invite Trump. I went to the one here in Florida. This was a couple years ago. I made a YouTube video about this as well. I forget what they call those freedom conferences. Some of you may have been to them. And uh, they had a bunch of speakers. Uh, of course, Tr President Trump was the highlight, but they had Don Jr., Kim Guilfoyle, Sarah Huckabee, a whole bunch of conservative speakers, and Candace Owens. <clears throat> and you could pay. It was not cheap. You could pay to go and meet and take photographs with them. And there was this moment at the event where it was time to go and uh, take your pictures. It, they cost a lot of money, a couple hundred dollars. The line that people were in for Candace Owens was the longest line of all. More people than were in line to um, get pictures with Don Jr. And I thought, wow, that's um, that's something. So now that she's left the Daily Wire, though, She's taking this tact, and she she put a tweet out yesterday, um, and I, I'll just read this. Um, and she's getting this label of being anti-Semitic because of her Israeli positions. When she talked about his, it, it was you know, I don't like Ben Shapiro at all. Okay, I don't. He's a never Trumper. I don't like him. I find him personally annoying. At the you know, he talks as fast as an auctioneer. I think he's really a mediocre talent um, that. Um, has has gotten a lot of financial backing behind him and been able to push himself to become like number one viewed and all these things. But um, I don't like the guy at all. However, as much as I despise that never Trumper, I do agree with him on his positions in Israel. I'm, I, I tell you the guys this all the time. Whatever you, Israel is not Ukraine. I support Israel and I I do support the same positions as Ben Shapiro when it comes to Israel. And I'm not Jewish by the way. I'm Christian. Um, but I, I support Israel. Candace Owens tweeted this yesterday, and this is, if she goes down this uh, direction, she will destroy herself. Uh, and this is what Candace Owens tweeted yesterday. Americans know nothing about real history. Did you know that 12 million Germans were ethnically cleansed after World War II? Did you know half a million of them were murdered for the crime of speaking German? The children were lined up and shot. Well, over 2 million women and children were raped at the end of the war. Many of them dead or killed as a result. And then she, she goes on. Um, okay. And she has a link to a documentary, which I watched some of it yesterday. I, it was, you know, BBC documentary. At least it said BBC in the, in the thing. Um, what she's talking about are a lot of half-truths, okay? Um, the, when the Russian, the, the Russian army... The Russians lost more people than all the other allied nations combined in Europe, okay? And they did do a lot of raping and killing and when they went into Germany. There's no doubt about it. But here she is, you know, the Germans were all Nazis. Uh, don't believe this idea that they weren't. The children, uh, you know, that's one thing. But the adults were all Nazis, um, they turned their Jews over to the authorities willingly. They were participants in it, okay? Um, and there were a lot of things that happened at the end of the war. There was a, um, you know, there was a, re a, a German resistance. There was, a, there, was an, there was a German resistance in Germany 
to the Allied occupation that lasted until the 50s. So the war continued. It wasn't often reported that way. The war continued with the uh, Nazi insurgency until the 50s, okay, mid-50s. Uh, so a lot of things did happen in Germany after the war. But it wasn't one of those wars where all of a sudden you turn a switch. The atrocities that the Germans brought on Europe are just, they're unimaginable. Unimaginable what the people of Europe went through. And, and the Russians really suffered a lot. So while there's shreds of truth to what she's saying, she's, she's being very sympathetic to Nazis here. Um, and, you know, the, the, the German army did rape German women when they went through Germany. There were a lot of civilians who were killed, no doubt. I, I'm sure we, you know, we, through the bombing uh, of Germany, were targeting civilian targets um, to break the, the, the will of the Germans who were fighting. For, they were Nazis. Um, no one's going to be sympathetic to Nazis, okay? And what she's talking about here, uh, she's, she's talking about Nazis. And no one is going to be sympathetic to Nazis. And even though the war was officially over, they were still Nazis, including the civilian population who uh, allowed uh, all of it to happen, including the camps in uh, their, their neighborhood. If Candace Owens... Uh, continues to go down this path that she's going to uh, uh, go down with this, she's going to find herself in um, a really, really bad place. And it will be, it's, it's self-destructive what she's doing. Now, um, this story here is insane to me. It's being widely reported in multiple sources. Um, the Democrats are terrible people. There's, there's never been a time in our society that Democrats weren't bad, okay? Uh, I was talking yesterday on, on the stream in the morning. I, I said, you know, everything that liberals want America to ab apologize for are things that the uh, Democrats did. Jim Crow, segregation, slavery, Tuskegee experiments, all that was done by Democrats. Long list. The atrocities against the Indians during the Indians' war. Uh, the, the wars with the Indians, Democrats, Andrew Jackson, okay, Klan, Democrats, founded by Democrats. Um, and so, so Democrats, they, the, the Civil War was the Democrat insurrection against the federal government. Republican wins the election in 1860. The Democrats don't like it, so they l tried to leave the Union. They fired on Fort Sumter. Over half a million Americans killed during the Democrat insurrection. So Democrats are terrible people. And when you think you've seen Democrats go low, they can always find a scummier place. And they have with this story. Um, this is really sick. House Democrat introduces bill uh, aiming at uh, taking President Trump's Secret Service protection away from him, which he's entitled to as not just a presidential candidate, but as a president. Uh, Bernie Thompson on Friday introduced legislation that would strip Secret Service protection from convicted felons sentenced to prison. A, this is in the New York Post I'm reading from, by the way. A bill clearly aimed at Donald Trump. Unfortunately, current law doesn't anticipate how Secret Service protection would impact the felony prison sentence of a parole uh, of a protectee, even a former president, Thompson said the former chairman of the House January 6th Select Committee. This is um, some scary stuff. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Um, I'm Sean. I'm from Carolina. Uh, i got a question for you. So what do we do when they try to lock up Trump and Joe Biden steals the election? I mean, what's uh, What next? do we do? What do we do? Uh, when they try to lock up Trump, we wait for the appeal. <laughs> That's what we do. Um you know, the thing about um, this, and th th this is a very interesting thing, because what um, they're in, you know, wh what's going to happen in this New York trial is unknown. They've got a jury packed with um, liberals. It's New York City, you know. I went through with the jury members yesterday. They get their news from the New York Times and everything else. They may get a hung jury. I don't see any scenario where there's an acquittal. 
But if they get a conviction, the mainstream thinking is, well, the Secret Service would never allow President Trump to go to jail, okay, because he's a protectee. So you, you see Thompson here who's trying to take the Secret Service away from Donald Trump so they can lock him up. When they get the guilty verdict, which they may get, I, I would say it's it's probably it, it it's no what you can never predict these juries okay, um, the one juror the immigrant I played her interview on, um, uh, the program the other day on my podcast on my most recent podcast episode the one with the accent that just became a U.S. citizen in August, she probably was a Trump person the person that recused herself after she was seated on the jury. It's probably more likely that they get a hung jury than a conviction. It's It's got to be close to 50-50, conviction or a hung jury. You know? These, these are New York City people. Everyone that knows them knows they're on the jury. So some of these people who may be leaning towards acquittal that could hang the jury may be afraid to do it because they don't want to get harassed for the rest of their lives by uh, their friends, colleagues, neighbors, families, et cetera, et cetera, because you know how liberals are, right? Like that last guy, he was a liberal troll that I just was talking to on the phone. But if they get a conviction, which is about 50-50, I think it's, I think it's a little more in favor of a hung jury than a, it, but I, I don't see any scenario where there's an acquittal with a New York City jury. However, the trial has not started yet. But you can see now how the judge is trying to rush opening arguments and not give the Trump team time to prepare. The, the judge, this corrupt judge is trying to rush, rush it, right? He's trying to rush it. And the reason he's trying to rush it is to hurt the defense's uh, chances of winning. But if they get a conviction, obviously this is going to be appealed. And this, will go, this may go through several appeals. The first appeal may toss it out. It may have to go to the Supreme Court. But the question is, if there's a conviction, while we're waiting for the appeal process, can the judge deny President Trump bail? Can he deny him bail? And if he denies him bail, that means what? Jail. And the Secret Service isn't going to allow it. So Bernie Thompson here is trying to get Secret Service protection taken away so they're not there to stop him being put in jail. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Good morning. How you doing? This is Maria from Florida. Hey, Maria. What's up? Hey, how you doing? I've been trying to call you all week. Somehow you two just took me off of notification of you because I've oh. been trying to get not, you know, through. not everybody. Yeah. You know, the thing with notifications, I know a lot of people get paranoid by that. Um, you don't mm -hmm. always get you. you um, you don't always get notifications, even if you have mm -hmm. notifications checked because they don't, you know, if you're, if you have notifications checked on 20 YouTube channels, YouTube doesn't want you to get notifications all day long. So yeah, that's yeah. why, you know, I don't, I rarely get notifications for channels that I have notifications checked on. It's just part right, of it. Right, right. Because, oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, okay, back to that with the Secret Service, what you talk about. Yeah, I heard that too. And they were saying that he would, they would need at least three turn of the government for that to be overturned. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it really won't be allowed, but he want, he want to push it. And Weak Mike Johnson, oh my God, I don't know what's wrong with him, but Weak Mike Johnson said, no, 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 we're not doing that. Yeah. But he would have to go through, he would have to go through, he would have to file a lawsuit or some kind of way to try to have, to protect the taken away. Yeah, you what? say that. But, the, yeah. you know, you, you see the abuse that they've done of the system already. You know, they're charging yeah. him. He, you know, this this trial in New York is a criminal trial. And I don't mean ch criminal charges against Trump. The court itself is criminal. The judge is criminal. Yeah. Char the, yes, the, the, statute, the, the statutes they're charging him with are federal crimes. They have him in New York State Court. They don't even have jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. And the statute of limitations has expired on, on, on those things yeah. anyway. And they're still trying to so so don't assume because the law says this or that or the constitution says this they, right. they're 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 making things fit what they want they don't care right right I, I get that because they for at this point they they don't violate every 
every constitution right he had as it is. So I yeah. wouldn't I wouldn't expect for them to try it. They're gonna try it. They'll try anything to try to lock him up because they just that corrupt. I every last one of them. And I never seen my so name is many Joe judges. I'm Carrie this. Kennedy. Oh, sorry about oh that. My I, God, I never I had... seen anything like that. Yeah, no, it's it's sick. It's twisted. It's insane. Yeah. Hey, Liz, well, thanks for the yeah, call. I appreciate okay. it. All right? All right, take care. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Uh, this the... is Sean from Carolina. Uh, I am definitely a Trump supporter, okay? I am not. Hey, liberal, please don't hurt me like that. Mm, okay, Ooh. all right, whatever. It's one call per show. Okay, I got, for those that are new uh, to my channel, um, I, I don't have a lot of rules. I have basically two rules, Okay. Rule number one is uh, one call per day, okay? And then uh, on Fridays, I do open phones. I call it Open Maga Mike Friday. So uh, one call per day and then uh, open phones on Friday, Open Maga Mike Friday. But the other days I live stream, you got to call in about the topics I, I bring up. Those are the rules. But the, the biggest one is one call per day, Okay. But if you're new, you, you don't know that, so that's that's fine. Just to let the last caller know, one call per day. All right, now um, the Kennedys yesterday are, are they're really terrible people too. Well, they're Democrats, right? The uh, the Kennedys came out yesterday and endorsed Biden over uh, Robert Kennedy Jr. My name is Joe Kennedy. I'm Carrie Kennedy. I'm Rory Kennedy. I'm Kathleen Kennedy Townsend. Chris Kennedy, and I'm here to proudly endorse Joe Biden. And Joe Biden. Joe Biden. Our future is on the ballot in a way in which we haven't seen in generations. The only way to win this election is for everybody to go out and vote for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. When I think of modern politicians in our country in this century, I think Joe Biden is the RFK of his generation. What? Believes in democracy. What does that believes mean? in human rights. Believes in the freedoms. This is a president who embodies the Kennedy legacy. Okay. Um, I don't give a damn what the Kennedys think. Do you? I, 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 could, I, I don't care. Okay. But I will tell you this. Uh, there's one good thing coming out of this. Okay. The division in the Democrat Party, right? And, you know, um, Robert Kennedy Jr., I'm no Democrat. I would never vote for him. But but for his family to come out and endorse Joe Biden over him, they don't have to come out and do this endorsement video. The Kennedys always come out and endorse. I've never seen them do something like this. They, um, and not to one of their own family members. I mean, the Kennedys, let me tell you, how, you know, the Kennedys stood by Ted when he killed a woman. And now they, they just throw Robert Kennedy to the curb like this. You know, you really wonder, though, how much juice do the, uh, do the Kennedys still have? How much juice do they still have? You know? I don't think they have too much. But there's a little bit of division uh, inside the Democrat Party. So I, I you know, and, and Robert Kennedy Jr., you know, he's he's a Democrat. He's got a very sketchy background. Uh, he has no chance of winning. But my goodness, what a, what a low-life family. I, if, when your family betrays you like that, it can't feel good. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Oh, uh, Sherry. What a, oh, hold on. Let me turn the. Mm hmm. <laughs> what a disgrace. Yeah, I, I saw that yesterday. They came out and officials. What do they got? What, what do they have? They must be scared of the Democratic Party, the, the DNC, that they can't. There's nobody can like Biden. It's, in, it's impossible. And then they, can, they, they, they do that to their own. And you know what? They all, some of them have that Catherine Hepburn voice. I noticed two of them have that. Well, so that, whatever that condition that Robert voice. Kennedy Jr. has, I guess it runs in the family because one of the girls had it too. But I want you to think about yeah, it. You know, Ted Kennedy killed Mary Jo Kopechny. They had that rape yeah. thing that happened here in Palm Beach. Remember that? And they stood by mm -hmm. William Kennedy Smith with the rape thing. They stood by Ted when he mm -hmm. killed the girl. And uh, they didn't go out and make a video supporting the rape victim or supporting Mary Jo Kopechny. And, but Robert Kennedy mm -hmm. is opposing Biden and the and the rest of the family come out and make that video? Scum. The Kennedys are scum. Yeah, I mean, why why would they stand with their own relative? Like I said, they got something. To, or stay out of it. With. 
Yeah, well, why would you come out and like that? that that's a disgrace. I hope they have karma with them. They deserve yeah. that. That's, that's a the karma they have, have is they've know, got their, the, the look. The Kennedy gene is ugly. <sighs> They're ugly people physically. I'm talking about. They're not good looking people. They got they got the money, they got the fame, but they don't have the looks. That's the curse. I mean, you, here's the thing. Like, here's the thing that ticks me off. Our democracies on. What the hell? Are they all these people in D.C. living a bubble? Well, here's let me tell you what let me tell you what pisses me off about the Kennedy family. You know, Robert Kennedy Jr. I don't agree with him on anything. And, and the way that he's treated women in the past is low life. I mean, he's, he's a pig. Yeah. However, um, he, he believes that the deep state, the military industrial complex killed his father and his uncle, President Kennedy and uh, Bobby Kennedy, Senator Kennedy. And they did it over Vietnam. And um, he, uh, I, I've seen him talk about it. And he lays out a very good case. And I'd like to see President Trump bring him in, declassify all the Kennedy uh, files, both Kennedy files, and put him in charge of it. Um, and and here you have the Kennedy family siding with the deep state military industrial complex that killed mm -hmm. President Kennedy and Bobby Kennedy over Robert Kennedy. So the Kennedy family, they've they've sold out. Hey, thanks for the call. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Montana, Mark. Hey, Mark. What's up? I agree with you 100 percent when talking about democrats or bad people because mm -hmm. even before trump ran for office i would see these hearings where the republicans barely get four or five minutes but when the democrats would talk they would get 10 to 15 minutes yeah so you know just watching those hearings shows how much hate there is from the Democrats. Mm -hmm. And it's a hundred percent true what you say. They're just they're not nice people. Oh and no. They're terrible people. They're the worst. God. You know, there's this thing with you know, when you were calling him out her the, the the military industrial complex killed the, the Kennedys, okay? And here you have the Kennedy family opposing Robert Kennedy and siding with the military industrial complex that killed President Kennedy. I mean, they, they should be ashamed of themselves. Hey, Mark, I, I appreciate the call. Thanks, man. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Once. Yes, Dave from Virginia. Hey, hey Dave, what's up? Yeah, you know, I think uh, if, <clears throat> if John F. Kennedy was still alive, he would take his own kids behind the woodshed and just spank them. Spank them. them. Yeah, maybe. Them. Perhaps. You never know. I hope so. I hope you never so. know. Maybe he and will. And I hope that, uh, I, yep, and I hope Donald gets through this and we all he can will. pray for him and absolutely and for him and, and tell everybody you know to, tell everybody you know to, hey, you got to go for the man. <laughs> absolutely. Hey, thanks for the call, man. Take care. It's good to hear from you. Now, uh, I want to tell everyone that you know, great way to support my content, my channel, my podcast, the radio show. Go to MyPillow.com. Use my promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E. Just humongous savings site-wide. Right now, the $25 uh, spring extravaganza continues with my promo code Kane. You can take advantage of all of the um, specials at MyPillow.com with my promo code Kane, not just the ones I talk about. Um, the, the mattress uh, topper... Hold on, caller. I'll be right with you. The mattress topper, 50% uh, off with my promo code Kane. That is a great deal. I sleep on the mattress topper. have it on all the beds in my house. But as you can see, there are huge deals going on, including the bed sheets for $25, 50% off the MyPillow towel sets, $25 for the MyPillow slippers, just huge deals. And when you use my promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E, you get these great deals and you're supporting my content. So uh, please do that. MyPillow.com, promo code Kane, K-A-N-E. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? My name's Peter from uh, Charlotte, Vermont. Okay. What's up? Just wanted to say thank you for the content uh, I clicked on because I uh, saw that there was some Tucker uh, yes. stuff. And you know, 
I would admit that I was a, I'm still a progressive person, but I think left, right, progressive, conservative, they're all used to divide people. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's really just a sliver of the population against all against the rest of us. When you say you're and, progressive, uh, what are you progressive about? Uh, well, I, I mean, I think I'm still traditionally on the left, but I think the right left stuff, those narratives just break down. I mean, I talk to people I think of as Republicans or conservative and they, I mean, they want to, they don't want poor people to starve. They just disagree how to, Go about well. Uh, the the liberals, what yeah. they want to do is keep people starving forever, feed them a little bit, so they'll be loyal to them. You know, Republicans, we want to help people and then get them on their own feet, so they are not hungry ever again and they're self sufficient. Um, I I understand what you're saying. I I think I. I, you know, I don't know. I mean, I would agree with you that like the liberals have become completely authoritarian, and I reject that. They always have been. You know, I you know I was talking before you joined, and by the way, welcome to my uh, channel, and and uh, you'll enjoy my content. If you're new, subscribe. You'll love this channel. Um, the Democrats, okay. there's the Democrats have done no good in this country, none since their existence. Well, I I would agree. Um, I'm a big fan of another kind of lefty who's seen the breakdown, Jimmy Dore, and uh, you know Democrats run all these big cities, and they're terrible. And I live in Vermont, and you know we've got a Democratic majority. I, I give you next. You know, you know, people. Biden said yesterday the Trump tax cuts are going to expire, and and Biden said yesterday he's going to allow that. He's going to let the Trump tax cuts expire. That means he's run. He's running on the idea that he's going to raise all of our taxes. That's not good. Right, right, right. I mean, I, you know, I, I'm, I don't know. I just. Uh, I'm open to the discussion and, you know, even people I disagree with, I don't think they're my enemy. You know, we're all Americans. Well, it depends. And, uh, it, de well, it depends. I mean, you know, look at how the uh, uh, Democrats and the Uniparty and the Republican establishment have all these fake trials against President Trump. I mean, think about that. Well, I mean, that's I, they, they that's things that things I, have really gotten with, bad I in this agree. country. I agree with you in my, you know, I'll talk to my, my uh, NPR listening parents and they'll oh. be like, ooh, Trump, ooh, Trump. And I'm just like, we're a banana republic now. This is lawfare. I said, I don't support Trump, but I don't appreciate using the law to just knock him out of the box. I mm -hmm. want to have a fair election and yeah. let, let the winner win. That's and correct. I wish them well because we're all Americans. You know, when Obama ran the first time, I didn't support Obama. You know, and when he won, he won. And I, you know, and I had to suck it up, you know, and, yeah. and, and, and what they're doing to Donald Trump with this lawfare, you know, Donald Trump says this all the time. They're not doing this to me. They're doing it to you. And he's right. It's because we're yeah, not loyal to them. We're not, we're not going along with their plan. So how, how'd you find me? I, Just I, popped up on your uh, YouTube feed this morning? Yes. Yes. Well, yeah. I'm glad you found I'm me. Happy to, yeah. I'm happy to subscribe. Enjoy the content and the discussion thank you brian well thank you thank you yeah Ooh. by the way if you're new make sure you subscribe and uh welcome and you can see the florida sun has come out and i and i have the uh the the blind open in front of me which should be closed i forgot to close it because it was dark when i started and so i got the sun that's what's behind me you see that you can see my ring light see that's what the shadow is it's my ring light <laughs> i used to light up my face um hey guys thanks for watching I, I do appreciate it. If you're new, please subscribe. You will enjoy my content. I live stream every day of the week, and I always take live calls when I'm uh, live streaming from one of my studios. Sometimes I'll live stream from the car or back porch, but if I'm in this studio, the radio studio, I always take live calls. And uh, we've had great calls today on the stream, and it's greatly appreciated. If you're already subscribed, like the video. That helps so much. Um, and again, uh, to support my content, go to MyPillow.com and load up. The $25 spring extravaganza continues. Uh, you can take advantage of all the specials. You know the MyPillow coffee, 50% off with my promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E. And every time you use my promo code Kane, you're supporting me and my content. Thanks for watching. My name is Brian Craig. I'll see you next time.